Hello, welcome to Ask Pastor Prince. Today, we are answering a question from Naomi. She says, Hello, Pastor Prince. I'm Naomi. I have been immensely encouraged by your teachings on YouTube. Thank you for your efforts. Oh, wow. God bless you. God bless you. And she wants to know, she says, Why will a God of love who loves us so much and even sinners consider taking many people to hell all because they don't believe in him does he love and hate very powerful very interesting question Naomi. first of all i want you to know that god is not considering taking anyone to hell that is, that is not part of his considerations he's not considering taking anyone to hell Hell was made for Lucifer. When Lucifer rebelled against God, God threw him down to hell. So hell was not made for man. God never intended to make hell or to create hell for man. Hell was made for Lucifer. And you see, until sin came into the world, there was no knowledge of man going to hell. There was knowledge of hell but there was no knowledge of man going to hell until sin came into the world. It was when sin came into the world that the knowledge of man going to hell came into place. Now that means that all that we talk about hell is because of sin. Sin is the reason why we talk about hell. If sin had not entered into the world, we wouldn't talk about hell. You see, the scripture says that in Romans chapter 5, the scripture says that for as by one man's disobedience, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and death passed upon all men. You see, one thing I want you to understand here is that the devil, Satan, was the only sinner among God's creation before sin entered into the world. He was the only sinner. Satan is the altar of sin. But even though Satan was around and among God's creation and had rebelled, you see, and Satan is, was and is the author of sin and the only sinner that was among God's creation, there was no sin in the world. As long as there was no sin in the world, there was no problem with whether man will go to hell or not to go to hell. But when sin came, then that decision had to be made. You see, so Romans says that by the disobedience of one man, it says sin entered into the world. And then it says, and death by sin. And it says, and death passed upon all men. You see, and Jesus, before I explain that scripture, Jesus explains something else more about the devil when he says that he was a murderer from the beginning. He says, you are of your father the devil, and his last you will fulfill. Says he was a murderer from the beginning, and he has he did not abide in the truth or abode not in the truth. And he says, when he speaks lies, he speaks of his own or of its own, because he is a liar and the father of lies. So you see, when sin entered into the world, death came by sin, and that is why Jesus was explaining the devil as a murderer. Now he calls him a murderer not because he killed somebody. I call him a murderer because it was the devil that deceived the first man, Adam. And the first man, Adam, disobeyed God and sinned. And by that disobedience and by that sin, death, sin entered into the world and death came alongside. So when death came alongside, man was separated in fellowship from God. Because of that separation, which we call spiritual death, he refers to the devil as a murderer. And he refers to him as a liar because he's like a sponsor of rebel. See, a sponsor of falsehood. So he started the whole thing, was able to deceive man, and then man fell for him. After, man cre after God created man, man disobeyed God. And that was when sin, says, as for us, by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So sin gained entry into the world through the disobedience of one man you see and when sin came into the world that meant that the nature of sin 
had taken hold of the spirit of man. And by that nature of sin that had taken hold of the spirit of man, man had become a rebel, just like the murderer, the devil, man had become a rebel against God. Now, sin had reintroduced another purpose for man. Man had become a servant or a slave to his new boss, his new master, the devil. Man had become a prey of the devil. And because of that, Satan, Lucifer, stood condemned already before the creation of things. Because of his rebel, even before Adam came, he had been condemned. So when man sinned against God through his disobedience, God had no choice because God is a God of justice and he is referred to as the righteous God. Because man had made the enemy, the devil, his ally, God had to condemn man just like he had condemned the devil. So God pronounced judgment on man which we refer to as condemnation. Condemnation means that judgment unto damnation or judgment unto destruction. So it means that now the devil was under condemnation and his ally, man, who had also disobeyed God, was also under condemnation. So now God, out of love, wanted to rescue man or had to rescue man. God devised a plan to rescue man out of that kind of condemnation because God did not want man to be condemned alongside the devil. Yet, man had disobeyed God and God as a God of justice had to condemn him alongside his ally, the devil, his new boss, the devil. And that is how come man was condemned by God or punished by God for disobeying him. So now two creatures, man, the devil, disobeyed God and they were all under condemnation. But the devil was under condemnation before even Adam was created. And Adam had found an ally and they were all under condemnation. Now, God wanted to rescue man. Because God was a good God, like you said, you said God is a good God. Yes, God is a good God. He's a God of love. You said it here. It's a God of love. And because he's a God of love, he found or devised a way, a plan to bring man out of that condemnation. God is very principled. So he wanted to bring man out of that condemnation. He wanted to rescue man out of the hands of sin, the grips of sin, the grips of death, and the bondage of his boss, the devil. What did God do? John chapter 3 verse 16 says, God of love, God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, says, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life or eternal life. So God actually sent his son Jesus into the world to rescue man from the grips of sin, from the grips of death, number two, and from his newfound boss, the devil, and the condemnation that man was under. So when Jesus came, Jesus came to destroy sin in sinful man, to destroy sin, number one, in sinful man, number two, to be a propitiation, a ransom. Now, that's what the scripture says, it says that Jesus should be a propitiation or a ransom. They say they be a messenger, one among a thousand, who showed one, who showed man his uprightness. It says, I shall say, deliver man from going down to the pit because I have found a ransom. That ransom was Jesus Christ. So first of all, Jesus came to destroy sin in sinful man. Two, to be a propitiation, a ransom. Now, the word propitiation, the word ransom or propitiation actually means an exchange price. A price that will be that will be given in exchange for man. A price that will be given so that man will be released or rescued from the hand of the enemy. So Jesus became a propitiation. 
a ransom for the release of man out of God's love. And then the third one was that Jesus became, or Jesus came as the just, the scripture says, calls him the just and the justifier of him that believes. Now the word just and justifier there means that the righteous one and the epitome of righteousness, that is the one possessing the quality of righteousness. So he was the, the, the just or the righteous one, then the justifier, the one who carries the who possesses the epitome of, of, of righteousness. And to, the justifier also means that the one who gives his righteousness free to everyone that believes in him. And this thing, this God did out of his love, out of an expression of his kindness. You see. But what happened, or the problem now for which man goes to hell, for which any man goes to hell, if somebody goes to hell or if man is taking, it is not God that is taking him to hell. The problem is, God has extended his gift of love to man. God has expressed the riches of his kindness to man. The problem is that even though God has extended his love to man and expressed the riches of his kindness in the person of Jesus to man, man have refused to accept this love and this kindness. So as many that believe in him or believe in Christ Jesus, or as many that have received Christ Jesus, they have passed from this condemnation. They have passed from death to life. They have been rescued from the grips of sin. They have been rescued from the grips of death. They have been rescued from the hands of the newfound boss man, the newfound boss of man, the devil. They have been rescued, they have been delivered. But not many have accepted. Those who have, who have accepted have been delivered. They have been freed. They are no longer under condemnation. But those who have rejected this gift of love still stand under condemnation because they have rejected the gift that has been given by God out of his love. They have decided, that is according to, they have decided to stay with the devil under condemnation. It's a decision. That is why being born again is a decision everyone has to make. Until you are born again, you are still under the bondage of the devil and therefore you are still under the pronouncement of condemnation. It is that condemnation that takes you to hell. It is not God that is taking you to hell. So God is not taking anyone to hell. It is men themselves taking themselves to hell simply because they have refused the gift of love. They have refused the kindness of God. They have refused the gift of God in the person of the Lord Jesus. And by that rejection, they are still under condemnation, even though legally Christ Jesus has released all from condemnation legally. But it is up to them to accept what Christ has done for it to be appropriated in their lives. So it is just like your dad is a judge, you make a mistake, you break the law, the laws catch up with you, you are taken to the court, your, judge pronounces, your dad pronounces judgment on you, judgment to destruction or condemnation, you are taken to prison, waiting to be hanged, for instance. Then, your dad devises a strategy to release you, and then orchestrates this strategy to release you, so that you'll be free from that condemnation. And after your dad does that, when you say in prison, I am not going out, I don't want to be freed, then that means that you have positioned yourself to be under that same condemnation that you'll be freed from. So when it is time for them to take those who will be taken to be hanged, you'll be included, even though your daddy has made another pronouncement to release you out of his love, to release you from that condemnation. But you have refused it. You see, so that is the scenario, that is the whole thing. So every man has the right to be saved. And every man has the right and the willpower to refuse 
to be saved. And that is why John says that, that for God so loved that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Then he says that the one who believes in him has passed from death unto life. But the one who does not believe in him is condemned already. Because then he says, this is the condemnation, that light has come into darkness, but men love darkness more than light. That is the condemnation, that light has come, the gift of love has come, kindness has been released, but man has rejected it. You see, so God is not angry at anyone because of the sin he commits. No. And no one is taken to hell, taken to hell even because of his own sin. Anyone that goes to hell is going to hell all by himself because he has decided not to accept the gift that God has given. And that is why the Bible says that all things are of God. It says, who has reconciled us unto himself. God has reconciled us unto himself by Christ Jesus. It says, and he has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation so we have been entrusted with a ministry or that ministry to tell others that jesus christ was sent out of god's love to rescue you from the the nature and the grapes of sin you see to rescue you from death which came alongside sin and to rescue you from the elements of sin and even from the new box that man took the devil to rescue you from the hands of the devil and to rescue you from condemnation. Says we should, that why says he has given us that kind of ministry to tell them, to tell others, to preach to them, so that they will accept and be free. He says, and has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. He says, to wait that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Hallelujah. So God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. So we have a responsibility and every man has a decision to make to accept this reconciliation or to reject it. When you reject it, you stand condemned. When you accept it, you have passed from condemnation into life and into fellowship with our Lord Jesus and to fellowship with the Father. So that is it. God out of love is not taking anyone to hell. He has brought a way out. Jesus is the way out of condemnation. Jesus is the way out of hell. When we accept him as the Lord of our lives, we have passed from that condemnation. We have passed. And that is why every man has to be born again. You need to be born again. You are watching me and you are not born again. You need to be born again. If you want to be born again right now, say this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart that you were raised from the dead. I confess you as the Lord of my life. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Keep watching us, Pastor Friends, and your life will never remain the same again. You have questions? Send those questions to our social media platforms. God bless you. For answers to previous questions, visit Christ World Television on YouTube. You can also send your questions to the comment section on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages. You are blessed.